Salt states, the configuration management system inside of Salt can be used to its full extent using Salt SSH, allowing you to take a minionless or agentless approach to configuring and managing remote systems. The first thing that we want to do is download an existing formula. Now we're going to download a more complicated formula from Salt Formulas so that we can walk through how to configure more aspects of SALT SSH with respect to running SALT states. So first we CD to, to serve SALT and we're go ahead, going to go ahead and clone the Apache formula. Now the Apache formula up on cell stack formulas again is a very robust and very powerful set of many formulas. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the .git directory just because we don't need it. If you leave it there, that's perfectly all right. Next, we're going to copy the pillar example, which was shipped with the salt stack formula into our pillar location. Now, the pillar inside of salt is a secure location where we can define variables and define any extraneous information or arbitrary data sets that are needed by the configuration management system. This makes it very easy to create highly reusable salt states and then be able to steer them, so to speak, through minor pillar adjustments. Now that we've got the example pillar in place, we're going to go ahead and edit the pillar top file so that all of the systems that we're going to hit with SALT SSH will also apply the Apache pillar. We do that by defining base, the environment, followed up with the target of all of the remote systems, and then we list all of those pillar SLS modules that are going to be realized via uh, the configuration management system and via salt SSH. Now, of course, that star is us just being lazy and saying everybody, but that can use any targeting system which salt SSH is capable of using. So the host name or such or the ID that has been defined inside of the roster file could also be placed there or any glob or regular expression statement representing them. Now that we've set up a pillar to use with SALT SSH, we're going to go ahead and open up the SALT master. One of the things that we get to do here is define that we want to add some extra file references. SALT SSH is very particular about making sure that it does not send any files down to the remote system which are not needed by that remote system. One of the benefits of us walking through this Apache model is that it allows us to demonstrate that we can say, even though SALT SSH doesn't think this file is important, we still want to send it along anyway. Now we're able to go out and first query the pillar of this remote system. Very quickly, very easily, we're able to see all of those bits of information that are stored inside of that Apache formulas pillar. We're then able to execute the actual Apache SLS on the remote system. We're going to have to wait a few moments, of course, while the configuration management run occurs. We've got the full information about Apache being installed on the remote system. We can see the version of Apache that was installed, that Apache was not previously installed, and we can also see the installation of all of the individual dependent systems as well, so that we get a complete, clean, and crisp audit of everything that was done on that remote host. And now Apache is up and running. If we wish to dive deeper into this Apache formula, many of the formulas that are available on SaltStack's formula repository come with 
a lot of functionality, a lot of extra capability. And the Apache formula is one of the most extensible that are that is currently available. And so as we looked, there are quite a few additional states which came down, which would set up Apache also with things like mod rewrite or uh, mod proxy, etc., etc. Thank you for watching this video on how to use SALT SSH with states. Hopefully it will help you get up and running using SALT SSH for agentless configuration management much more quickly.